before we start working on the Azure Open AI and creating the resource, uh, we need to submit an access form. I'll provide the link for this access form in the description of the video. Now let's create the Azure Open AI service. So I'm in the resource group that we have created earlier. Search for Open AI and click on Azure Open AI. Click on Create. Select the resource group. I'll select the same region, East US. Provide a name for the Azure Open AI service. So I'll name it as AZ Open AI Search Demo. Select the pricing tier. Click Next. Keep the network options as it is and create. Now the resource has been created. So here how it looks like. So after creating the service, now we will do a model deployment. So for that, click on go to Azure Open AI Studio. So this will open the Azure Open AI Studio page where we can deploy a new GPT model. On the home page, we have some articles for the documentation. Go to the deployments option. Click on create new deployment. Select the model. So here I'll select the first option, GPT 3.5 Turbo. Keep the model version as default and provide a deployment name. So I'll name it as GPT 3.5 Turbo model deployment. Keep the other options as it is and click on create. So now this has created the model deployment. Now we will create the .NET Core web application. For .NET Core web application, I'll select the ASP.NET Core web app where we have the Razor pages. Click Next. So I'll name the application as AZ Open AI Chat Demo. Uncheck Configure for HTTPS. And I'll select .NET 6. Click on Create. After creating the application, I have removed the boilerplate code from the index.cshtml page and added the font awesome library that we will use in the UI and just added one link here to display the search your documents tab. So this is just a blank application. Now we will add the required app settings first. So go to app settings. I have copied the app settings and I'll just paste here. So these are the app settings that we will require. We will need the storage account SaaS token, the account name and the container name. And these are the settings that we need for search service, which is Azure Cognitive Search and Azure Open AI. I'll populate the values for these app settings and then we will add a class to upload the document into this storage account. I have populated the values for the settings in app settings.json. So I have added the storage account name and container. The search service endpoint is the URL of the Azure Cognitive Service, which is copied from here. And I have copied the index name and indexer name for Azure Open AI API base. And the URL can be copied from the keys and endpoint. So here is the base URL and here are the keys. So I'll populate the SaaS token and the keys for Azure Cognitive Search and Azure Open AI. Now in the code, let's add one new folder for services. Now under services folder, add one interface. Let's call it I file upload service. I'll add two methods under it. One is upload file, which will take a parameter of form file. And another is to get the uploaded file names. Let's add a class called cloud file upload service. This class will implement the interface I file upload service. Now in this cloud file upload service, we will write the code to upload the document into the storage account and then perform indexing in the Azure Cognitive Search for that uploaded document. First, I'll inject the I configuration service to fetch the values from the app settings. So let's add a constructor here and inject I configuration. Let's add a field. I'll rename it as underscore configuration. I'll add another property for I configuration section to fetch the storage account section from the app settings. 
declare the UI configuration section here. And here I will populate the config section field. So for that, I'll read the storage section from the app settings using the configuration object. To upload the file into a storage account, we need the azure.storage NuGet package. So I'll add that. Search for azure.storage.blobs NuGet package and add it. We will need another NuGet package for authentication to storage account, which is azure.identity. So let's add that. Now both the NuGet packages are installed. I'll add one private method here to create the blob service client through which we can communicate with the storage account. So this method will return the blob service client. Now we will fetch the storage account name and the container name from the app settings first. Here I will use the config section and in the parameter I'll pass the account name. I will add another variable to get the SAS token. Use the config section object to get the value of the token. For the get blob service client method, earlier I mentioned that we will use container name, but we don't need the container name here to prepare the blob service client. We can only use the account name and SAS token. Create a blob URI variable, which will point to our storage account. So here I will pass the account name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net and create a blob service client object. And as the parameter, I'll pass the blob URI and the SAS token and return the blob service client object from here. Now in the upload method, get the container name first, use the config section object here and get the blob service client object. Create a blob container client, pass the container name here. And then create a blob client object. So blob client will be blob container client dot get blob client. And in the parameter, pass the file name. So here I'll use the form file object dot file name. Now using the block client object, we can upload the file. So we will read the file using a stream object form file dot open read stream and then use block client dot upload method to upload the file. Pass the second parameter to specify whether the upload should override the file if it is already present in the storage account. So I'll pass it as true and then return the file name from here. Now let's implement the get upload file names. So I'll prepare a list of a string here. Again, declare a container name variable. And get the blob service client object. Create a blob container client using the blob service client object. Now we can get the list of blobs using the blob container client dot get blobs method. So I'll populate the list of file names here and return the list. Now the cloud file upload service is completed. So let's add another interface to do the indexing of the uploaded document through Azure Cognitive Service. So I'll add the interface first and let's call it IAZ Cognitive Search Service. This will have one method which will return a bool. Let's call it a run and check indexer. Now add a class called AZ Cognitive Search Service. This will implement the interface. I will inject the I configuration and I logger into this class. So let's add the constructor for it add ilogger for az cognitive search service call logger add the fields for both configuration and logger i'll rename it as underscore configuration similarly for logger so the run and check indexer method will first 
fetch the indexer name from the app settings.json through configuration object and then we will use search indexer client to run the indexer by running the indexer we will refresh the index so that the index will pick our uh, newly uploaded document into the storage account by doing this the index will have the data of already uploaded documents into the storage account and the new document that we upload from the web page first get the indexer name from the app settings.json now declare search indexer client so for search indexer client we have to add a nuget package the nuget package is azure.search.document which helps us to communicate with azure cognitive search service so install this now add the using statement here for search indexer client the search indexer client takes two parameter one is the search service endpoint that we have added earlier into app settings.json and the search api key for authentication for indexer client we can invoke the method a run indexer and pass the indexer name so this will run the indexer and provide a response now here we will check the status of the indexer response so when we run the indexer it returns a 202 status when it successfully invokes the indexer and it will take some time for indexer to run so we will need to put a thread dot sleep here so i'll put a thread dot sleep for 5 seconds let's add one more method to check the indexer status whether it has ran successfully or not so here this response and the status will only mean that the indexer has been successfully invoked and after successfully invoking the indexer uh, we have to check again the indexer status whether it ran successfully or not so i'll add a method here to check that called check indexer status this will take the search indexer client and the indexer name create the search indexer status object first call it execution info and through search indexer client we can get the indexer status we will check the execution result of the indexer which we can get from execution info object dot last result so this will return the status of the indexer for the last execution so let's check whether last result has any error message or not if it is not null then log the error else set the boolean variable in return so i'll use the method here and return two from here if it is success else return false and just in case indexer takes more time to execute i'll wrap this into a try catch block so that we can log the error now both the services are ready to upload the document and index the uploaded document now go to program.cs and register both the services so that we can inject it into our cs html pages so before build call builder.services.add scope and add i file upload service similarly add i az cognitive search service 